Good evening and welcome to the News Hour. The U.S. Coast Guard confirmed this afternoon that the missing submersible in the North Atlantic Ocean was destroyed in a, quote, catastrophic implosion. Its debris was found on the ocean floor and all five people aboard were killed. William Brangham begins our coverage. This morning, an ROV, a remote operated vehicle from the vessel Horizon Arctic, discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic on the seafloor. It was the news no one wanted to hear. The missing submersible, which disappeared on Sunday on a descent down to visit the wreckage of the Titanic, had been completely destroyed. U.S. Coast Guard Rear Admiral John Mauger. The ROV subsequently found additional debris. In consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. The U.S. Coast Guard and the company that ran the trip, Ocean Gate Expeditions, expressed their condolences to the families of the five passengers who perished. They are Hamish Harding, Shazada Dawood, and his son Suleiman Dawood, Paul-Henri Narjolet, and Ocean Gate CEO and captain of the vessel, Stockton Rush. In a statement, Ocean Gate thanked the vast international search operation that mobilized over the last few days, saying, quote, the entire Ocean Gate family is deeply grateful for the countless men and women from multiple organizations who worked so very hard on this mission. Coast Guard officials said that the nature of the implosion and the depth at which the wreckage sits could make any salvage operation and recovery of the deceased very difficult. This is a incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there uh, on the seafloor. Uh, and uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. As those recovery operations continue and the families grieve their losses, there are sure to be further questions about Ocean Gate, its safety record, and the overall adventure tourism industry. In fact, as this saga unfolded over the last few days, past criticisms of Ocean Gate had reemerged. <laughs> Will Conan is chairman of the Marine Technology Society's Manned Underwater Vehicles Committee. Back in 2018, he addressed a critical open letter to the now deceased Ocean Gate CEO, Stockton Rush. And in an interview before today's discovery, he argued that the Titan was not certified to travel down to those depths. There are only 10 vehicles in the whole world that can go 4,000 meters or deeper, and all of them are certified, except the Titan. Coast Guard officials couldn't say exactly when the Titan imploded, but said the banging noises heard earlier in the week were seemingly unrelated to this disaster. The Titan's remains now lie in pieces on the ocean floor, less than 2,000 feet from the historic wreckage its passengers wanted to see. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham. Some additional perspective on this accident now and what it could mean going forward. We're joined again by Jules Jaffe, an oceanographer with the Scripps Institute of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego. Thank you for being with us. And Jules, when the Coast Guard says that the submersible's debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber, what does that mean? What, based on your vast experience, likely happened? Well, as we know, the vehicle lost contact about one and three quarters hour after it left the surface. And it was about two and a half hours to the bottom. So my conjecture is actually that it was not quite at the bottom, but was probably around 800 or 900, uh, 8,000 or 9,000 feet deep. And from what we understand, the pressure at that depth is around 4,000 pounds per square inch. So think about a square inch, think about 4,000 pounds. And when you think about the pressure, it's actually coming from all directions. So the best analogy I could think about was imagine you have an egg in your hand and you simply crush it. And I think, honestly, that's what happened to the vehicle. What happens next? Will, will there be a recovery effort or does the ocean depth make that impossible? 
Well, we do have these underwater robots that have, um, you know, arms on them. And I think, in fact, we could probably pick the debris up and load it into, say, a large basket. These underwater robots are pretty versatile. And I'm hoping that we can do that and learn really exactly what the failure was so a future version could ameliorate that problem and make uh, tourist exploration of the deep ocean more accessible and less dangerous. As we just heard in the report, there were questions about uh, safety issues having to do with OceanGate, about the quality of engineering, the level of testing that went into the development. How does all of that strike you in light of today's news? Well, I guess my dad used to say, hindsight is 2020. Um, it strikes me sadly that perhaps the company was not up to speed in understanding. Remember, we've already made two trips. So they're making about one trip a year, as far as I could tell from my reading the news. So they did one in 2021. They did one in 2022. And here we are on the third trip. And what happens to anything that's under stress, a mechanical component, is it fatigues. And think about the tremendous pressure, and then it relaxes, and the tremendous pressure, and it relaxes. The other part of the equation that I really worried about, and maybe it's validated, was, you know, when we take planes, we, we are convinced of their safety, but we don't always understand that the aerospace industry has strict standards for doing what's non-destructive tests and evaluation. And they use ultrasonic probes to examine the integrity of the metal components. If you've ever seen a plane, the wings are flexing. And those guys are world expert on ensuring our safety. It's pretty clear, sadly, that the people in this company were not up to speed on testing this vehicle and ensuring its safety for such a tragic occurrence as happened probably four days ago when they lost contact with the surface. Is adventure tourism going to change because of this? Should it change because of this? Well, you know, there's another company that makes underwater um, vehicles that have gone into the Marianas Trench, which is 35,000 feet. And this one, and I wouldn't call it a shallow application, but it's 12,000 feet. I think adventure tourism is going to be here to stay. And I am a supporter of innovation in underwater vehicle development. But clearly, we need to be a little more vigilant ensuring the safety and understanding the forces that are on vehicles. I mean, this design was very new. It was a uh, carbon fibers combined with titanium. And I think we need to worry a bit more about the stresses and the fatigue that happens when we make re repeated excursions into the deep ocean. Jules Jaffe, thanks so much for your time and for your insights. My pleasure.